Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at diagonalizing a matrix. So we're, con we're considering this matrix A, 2x2 two two matrix, and first we want to we want to see if we can diagonalize it first, and then if, if we can, then let's diagonalize it. So first thing is first, let's compute A minus lambda I. This will be 4 minus lambda, 4 minus lambda, 1, 1. Okay, and then we're going to compute the determinant of that matrix. This is our characteristic polynomial. So this is 4 minus lambda squared minus 1. Okay, Let's scroll down. This is going to be 16 minus 8 lambda. Uh, plus lambda squared minus 1. Our char characteristic polynomial is then lambda squared minus 8 lambda plus 15. So let's find our eigenvalues by setting this equal to 0. We get 0 equals, and what adds to negative 8 multiplies to positive 15. That's going to be minus 5 and minus 3. So we'll get lambda minus 5 and lambda minus 3. So we have two roots here, lambda equals 5 and lambda equals 3. So these are our eigenvalues. And I usually call the the uh, the lower one lambda 1, the second, and then the, like in increasing order I do lambda 2, lambda 3, etc. So these are this is lambda 1 and lambda 2 and we can actually tell already that this is diagonalizable because our eigenvalues are unique. They have an algebraic multiplicity of one, in other words, right? See how they, they, uh, they're both different and they don't repeat themselves. So it will be diagonalizable. But another way we can show this, we're gonna, we're gonna find our eigenvectors. If the algebraic multiplicity and is equal to the geometric multiplicity for each of the eigenvalues, then that's another way to tell it's diagonalizable. So let's, let's take a look at this. So let's start with a uh, lambda two, five. So if I'm I'm going to compute lambda minus five i now. So this will be four minus five in each of my diagonals, which is negative one and negative one. Give me one sec. Sorry, my dog in the background. She's making some noise. She wants to play. So we this matrix here. We've got negative one negative one and then this, this is what we have here okay and right all the solutions to this remember are the solutions for uh, which satisfy like a times some vector is equal to lambda times that vector right so we're solving for our vector v okay so let's row reduce this thing okay if we row reduce this we're gonna get one negative one and then a row of zeros here so the basis for my eigenspace that corresponds to lambda 2 is going to equal the span of one, this vector here, 1, 1. Remember here, it, it, let's, if we're considering like v, let's say v is our solution and it takes the place, it takes the components v1 and v2. Remember, we're solving this, this thing here v1 and v2 are each of our components. We also have this like little hidden homogeneous side of our matrix. So v2 is a free variable since it doesn't have a leading entry in that column. So that's why we've got a 1 in the v2 position. And then the first equation here from row 1 here, we can see we've got v1 minus v2 equals 0. So we have v1 equals v2. So v1 is equal to our uh, just our free variable, right? So we get 1, 1, okay? So moving on, we ha so we have 1, 1 as our uh, lambda 2, or the basis for lambda 2. Let's, let's consider uh, lambda 1 equals 3 now, okay? So let's compute uh, a minus 3 times i. And 4 minus 3 is 1. So that'll be both of my diagonals. All of my other entries are 1. And this is clearly just the same equation, so this will reduce to 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay, 
so then we can say that the the basis for e lambda one is equal to, and similarly we would get negative one, one, like this. And something that I just want to I just want to point out. Notice how the geometric multiplicity of lambda two is equal to one because the dimension of our uh, the dimension of our eigenspace that corresponds to lambda two is one. We can say the same thing about le the geometric multiplicity of lambda one. We only have one vector in the basis for the eigenspace that corresponds to lambda one, so the geometric multiplicity is one. And notice how up here the algebraic multiplicity of both of these roots is one as well because they only repeat once right so since these algebraic and geometric multiplicities are equal to each other that means that we have uh, a diagonalizable matrix okay so let's move on well, what we need to do is set up our matrix P, right? And P is going to help us diagonalize this. And, and all we have to do is put these corresponding eigenvectors into the columns of P. And I usually start lowest to highest again. So I do negative 1, 1 is my first column of this matrix. And then my second, my second lambda, lambda 2, corresponds to this eigenvector, 1, 1. So this is my matrix P. I'm going to find the term or the the inverse of P now, and we know that the inverse we can write it as one over determinant of B, P times the adjugate of P. This is one over, and then we've got negative one minus one. The adjugate of a two by two matrix we can find pretty easily as well. And I give my computer a minute to catch up here. Okay, cool. So, let me scroll down a bit here. So this is now, this will reduce to uh, negative half, 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 and a half. Right? Okay, so I have P, and I have P inverse. That's good. So, to diagonalize it, I just need to find that uh, that matrix D now, right? Like, And we know that D is actually just going to take the form of lambda 1, lambda 2, right? This is, this is something that we actually know. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how we can actually compute this. But just keep in mind that we're expecting this result, OK? So we know that D is equal to it's equal to p inverse a times p okay so we can we know all of these uh, matrices so we can compute this so let me fill in these matrices real quick so filling in our matrices we get these three matrices multiplied by each other and I can multiply these two together first and then multiply by this one or I could do it the other way I can multiply these ones first and then multiply that resulting one by uh, the first matrix. And it doesn't matter how you do it. You're going to get the same result. And you're going to notice that we will get the result 3, 3 and 5 as our diagonals. right? And there's lots of resources on how to multiply matrices. So I'm not going to go over that whole long process in this video. but this is our diagonalization matrix here. So this is the matrix that we are looking for. And the reason that this one is this this matrix is so great is that if we were to put D or, or like our matrix A to the power of some some number, let's say K, then we know that since A is equal to uh, P times A Time, or sorry, P times D times P inverse. If we were to do that K times, right, where we just multiply it 
by itself k times you'll notice that since the order doesn't matter where like of which matrices we multiply together first all of these p and p inverses that are next to each other they will start canceling each other out because they're equal to the identity matrix right so this is actually just going to result in p times d to the power of k times p inverse and this is so great because d to the power of k since we have only entries in our diagonal it's super easy to calculate d to the k because all it is is just and I'm not going to write out p and p inverse again but it's just the diagonal entries to the power of k right so we can come up with an expression um, for all of our entries in terms of k which is awesome so it makes the, uh, our multiplying our matrices like way easier and say like when we have like a really large number say I wanted to calculate like the uh, when k is equal to 100 instead of doing it matrix multiplication a hundred times I can just very easily find uh, like an expression by diagonalizing it um, and plugging in my value of k for this expression here um, there's also another really great video uh, that's on change of bases and it's by three blue one brown and there's another <clears throat> there's another uh, like meaning behind diagonalization which is like a lot trickier of a topic it's not covered in the, the Waterloo course if you're coming from there. Um, <clears throat> but I'll link that in the description as well because it is a really good uh, a really good video and like super helpful for understanding as well. But it is a little bit beyond the scope of the Waterloo course if that's where you're coming from. But anyways, that's it for this video. Um, I hope this was helpful and I'll catch you in the next one. Okay.